Hello and welcome back to the Folklore Hiking Stick Workshop. Um, it's a little bit chilly. I'm covered in uh, dust from sanding. Um, don't worry, I have been using a mask. Oh, and I found a really good quality one where, you know, after a day working on sanding wood, I don't have any, um, even though I haven't been breathing in the dust because I've had a mask, there's occasions that you do still find you can taste something in the back of your throat and mouth but i found a mask that does seem to be working on that and it doesn't seem to um, allow that to happen anymore but what i'm about to talk about is my hiking sticks we're about to get our stall back outside uh you know roadside and start selling from uh our stall out there um we've had to bring it in due to reasons i'll talk about some other time but what I'm going to talk about is uh, my hiking sticks. People have been suggesting they prefer my sticks with a majority of the bark on. I've usually done it the other way around. My biggest, um, you know, manufactured ones were the ones with just a small slither of bark. And that was because I fancied, you know, that to be what I considered the best looking models I produced. But ultimately, people are saying that they do prefer a stick with bark or, or the, the outer bark as the majority of the hiking stick. Because it kind of always get that same feedback. It reminds them that it is wild wood and it's something of the forest and, you know, outdoors. And it's what you perceive as a, um, a hiking stick. Now, I'll just quickly let you have a look. What I'm talking about, this is typically what I'll do. I'm, I'm producing hiking sticks at the bottom end of the market. And um, this is primary, what a good example. Um, it's been stripped, it's been sanded. Um, not overly sanded, but it's been sanded. Comes with an animal design, obviously a stag's head on this one. And as you can see, it comes down into a copper tip. And this is pretty much what I will take to sales and sell roadside. Um, and they've always done very well. But, and obviously the inner wood, depending on where I harvest it and species and time of year. And indeed, indeed the age of the wood, even the same species, you can have different colorations inside the wood. But this is typically what I'm talking about, a strip stick. But what I also do is a barked version like this now ignore the twist this is something that you know I, I find extremely difficult to find in my area but i do occasionally come across them but yet again i have a small area stripped where i can do my animal design and obviously logo but people are asking for more of these or they want to see more of these with bark so ultimately that's what i'm producing this year um i do kind of understand the theory but it's kind of tipped me on my head a little bit because i've always uh, gone for the stripped one believing a wood looked stick or hiking stick is what people are after but ultimately people who are after a hiking stick i'm beginning to get the message or it's coming back to me they want to see more bark left on because obviously as we stated you know it is of the wood and the forest and um it's not artificial processed wood uh, and and this is what they're after so yeah i'll let you have a quick little look at what i've got lined up here so as you can see, I've got all these to the point I'm doing my wood burning now. They're all pretty much made. I've got one bushwhacking model that I've got to put the uh, hand grip on. Um, I'll do that later on. But it, in essence, they're all ready for their wood burning. And then I'll apply the finishing products to them. But as you can see, I've got one, two, uh, three stripped wood ones. The rest have got a majority of the bark left on. And... Basically, all I'm doing is is going by the feedback people give me. Um, I've often wondered, like, you know, what other manufacturers uh, feedback is 
as in to, as regards to you know bark on bark off but for some reason this year people are telling me they want to see a majority of the natural bark on um yeah i'm sat down here now and as you can see i'm about to start um wood burning this is going to be the first candidate and as you can see by this one it's going to be a little songbird so i'm going to crack on with this and uh i've got something else i've got to do later on but uh, this is what I'm up to now. When you're um, wood burning, particularly with the method I'm using, which isn't a uh, proper wood burning tool, it does require you to practice um, on scrap wood before you get to do um, any artwork on any pieces of uh, wood or hiking sticks or, or, or arts and crafts that you place any value on. To yourself personally or something that you may be doing for somebody else or even trying to sell so uh yeah i'm reasonably proficient with this even though i would not classify myself as an artist um i can produce a a likeness to the animal that uh, i'm trying to wood burn or bird in this case as I said before, I do require to do a, a, a drawing of the actual um, bird or animal first, which you can see I'm now then doing basically a trace of the actual uh, drawing. Now, I actually do actually get all my... Um, initial drawings if you would like it from basically any inspiration i can and from that i then kind of do a a copy to produce this kind of um, design i'm by no means a gifted artist so everything i do it's kind of um, trial and error and this is how I go about providing myself a woodland animal or bird on a hiking stick. There are plenty of uh, other different methods and if you were you know really gifted I'm pretty sure you would probably be able to wood burn straight to the wood but me no i do have to do it by this method it means it's slower and it can be quite tedious when i have quite a few to do but i can also find it quite soothing and i do enjoy the smell of the wood as i'm burning it
and um, as you can see I've got the outline there and I'm going to be now working on the actual bird itself a bit more of the detail I have a rough outline there and from here I'm going to put a little bit of detail in and I'm going to do my logo down here and my tip on the actual um, soldering iron as you can see is a bit like a pencil tip uh, you can get various different tips that screw in and out um, but this one here offers me the, the chance to do fine work with the pointy bit and obviously get greater shading through just rolling it over onto the actual conical of the actual uh, tip so I can actually almost like shade like you would with a, a pencil but um, yeah I'm doing a little bit more of the detail here now and it's like the feathers basically I'm doing a kind of like inverted L shape in the opposite direction with the boot of the actual L shape actually at a slight angle basically like that as you can see then I'm going to put a few different marks and lines in it to just provide that that look as you can see there of kind of almost like a, a little bit give it a little bit more of like a 3d effect obviously i'm not but it just gives that that visual illusion that there's a little bit more depth to it than there actually is and um, i find it kind of works now because of the how i go about selling these particular sticks and for what i receive in return for doing it um there is very 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 little um requirement for me to spend hours on an actual piece of artwork it's more of like a little bit of a totem actually on the stick um you can lose yourself becoming too detailed trying to produce the, uh, a, a, almost a work of art um but if you've spent you know two hours doing a beautiful wood burning on on a hiking stick and you know you can only sell your hiking stick for what is basically minimum wage for an hour and you know you might as well not give it give up really because obviously you've spent your whole time what you get just doing the wood burning that's without even the manufacturing straightening materials and everything else involved in making this hiking stick so basically you know you have to be realistic obviously if it's your own personal one or you're actually able to charge enough for a hiking stick to, to warrant you putting the time in to do a beautiful piece of artwork um you know by all means but you have to be realistic if you're pretty much like myself in what you can charge to the amount of time and effort you can put in now this little bird here and i'll just show you and I'm pretty much finished. Um, just a little bit of shading here and there. And as you can see, I'm just dragging this over to, to, to add a little bit of burn to the wood. Not heavy, just enough to give that impression that there is colour all the way down through the back of this particular little bird. And I'm just doing it up through again. There. And as you can see, I've got a little songbird there. Now, 
that's pretty much where I'll leave it. It's a representation. You can see it is a songbird. And um, yeah, I'm more than happy with that. But if you were to go more in depth, like I said, you would have to be able to warrant that time on it. Um, from here, now it's my logo. And uh, then this stick would be ready to have its finishing products put on it. So as you can see there, I've got three that need actual finishing products now on them. Uh, three songbirds. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, I have to do volume rather than individual pieces that I can command bigger quantities of money for. Well, guys, that was just a very quick whistle stop. Um, little look around what's happening in the folklore workshop at the moment um, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of wood burning with me and discussion about um, particular styles of hiking sticks um, I've got well basically I've still got to stay here wood burning while I let you disappear off and do whatever you got to do uh, so this is uh, Andy from folklore um, hiking sticks and um, yeah take care and stay safe and I'll catch you guys again